we are covering TypeScript classes in this video. First of all, let's talk about ES6 and TypeScript. Since TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, ES6 classes and TypeScript classes are nearly syntactically the same. My ES6 classes video will cover that syntax, and in this video we'll talk about what is added on top of those ES6 classes. Those That additional syntax includes class level properties, public, private, and protected modifiers, read-only modifier, abstract classes, and interfaces. First of all, let's talk about class level properties. Class level properties are explicit declarations of properties on a class instance. This could always be done in ES6 classes by defining a statement like this.properties equal to some value, where you can then access dot property on that class instance anywhere. Declaring them on a class allows for better tracking of what information is stored on a class and whether or not it's expected to be used outside of the context of the, the class or only inside of the class. So here we have a class declaration of person. You can see that that second line where name is of type string. That would be ES6 invalid. Um, in this case, what this is is a name property defined on the person class. We can set that property just like you would any other property within an ES6 class. Class level properties can also be assigned within the constructor. If any of the public, private, or protected, and also read-only modifier are used to describe a constructor parameter, they're automatically assigned onto the class when you create a new instance of it. The property name will be stored as it is named in the parameter. So here we have a class definition of person with a constructor containing a single parameter called name of type string. We have the public modifier put in front of that. So the dot name property on a instance of a person can be accessed publicly. Next, we're gonna cover property modifiers, starting with public. Public is directly accessible via property notations on an instance of a class. So if we have a public constructor property called name, we're able to access that on an instance of the class, such as new person with Evan Williams, I can access dot name. Next, we have private, which can be accessed from within the instance of the class, but not by code external to the class instance. So here we define a class with a private name as opposed to a public. With the first um, instantiation of a person, we access dot name, but that's considered invalid and you'll get a TypeScript error saying that you're attempting to access a private uh, property on the person class. However, we can expose that using a getter with underscore name as the property. Um, and if we were to new up a, pro a person with Evan Williams as the name and access dot underscore name as opposed to dot name, um, it'll call that getter function and you can see it will return this dot name. So we're able to access the name property of the person class inside that getter function, but not outside. Next, there's protected. This can be accessed from within an instance or by a child class that extends the parent class. So here we have class person with a protected name property. We have a class called loud person that implements the person class. Um, and in that you can see we pass in a a name property and call the super, which uh, calls the constructor of the parent class. And you can see in the greeting, we can return, hello, my name is this dot underscore name. We call the getter that accesses this dot name dot to uppercase. If name was considered private on the person class, we would not have been able to access the this dot name dot to uppercase statement. Next, there's the read-only modifier. This must be assigned in the constructor or in the declaration of the variable. This is a non-modifiable public property on a class. So here we, we have class person with a read-only property on it called greeting. This is of type string and is set equal to hello world. We also pass in a name, which is a read-only property in the constructor. If we were to new up a person class with my name as the uh, constructor argument, we can console log person.name because it's read-only and again it's public. We can also do that with greeting. However, if we were to type person.name 
and set it equal to something, you would get a compile time error because it's a non-assignable property. Next, we're going to cover abstract classes. Abstract classes are used to share functionality between classes. Shared functionality can be implemented in the abstract parent and extended by children. Abstract classes cannot be directly instantiated, but their implementing children can. Abstract modifiers can be used on function declarations as well. They must be implemented by children classes. So that was kind of a lot to take in. Here is the code example of that scenario. So we have an abstract class called person, which takes in a name argument and assigns it to a protected, very, um, protected property on the instance called name. Um, we also have an abstract function called stage, uh, state age, which is of t returns void. We also have a shared function called greet, which does console.log, hello there, my name is, and then the name associated with the person. We have two children classes, one called dishonest person and another called honest person. The implementation of the state age needs to be done by each of these classes, otherwise it's considered an invalid implementation of the person class. So a dishonest person would say that I am math.min of their age or 30, whichever is the least, um, years old. An honest person would tell them the age that gets passed in. So for instance, if I were to new up an instance of honest person with Evan Williams and 27, if I were to do state age of that instance, it would say I am 27. However, if I were to say instantiate a dishonest person, let's call her Agnes and let's say she's 75 and ask her to state her age, it would say I am 30 years old because that is the minimum. So that's a way of implementing um, a subclass of an abstract class. In both cases, the greet would be the same, but their stating of their age is different. Next, there's interfaces. Interfaces can describe an object, but are not instantiable. These are useful for describing an object that is not instantiated, such as a server request that follows a specific API. Classes can implement an interface to make an instantiable object. Again, I'm following the same pattern with the abstract class. I'm going to give you a, a concrete version of code. So we have an interface called point, which has two properties, x and y, which are both numbers. You can see the very next statement where I instantiate a new object and assign it to a const point, which is of type point. Um, basically, it's saying this object needs to match the interface point. So if I'm able to set x and y, properties on that object is considered a valid implementation of the interface. If I were to put another property, it would not be. I also have a class called two dimensional point, which implements the point interface. That has two properties on it, X and Y. So therefore it matches the interface declaration. In both cases, they have an object with two properties on them, X and Y, and they match exactly what you would expect for the point interface. So hopefully that was useful. Um, it's extremely nice having a lot of the newer features, especially the um, public private modifiers. Um, I'm a big fan of that aspect of TypeScript. I hope you learned a lot and we'll be using this throughout the rest of the videos and also in our backend project that we'll get into after all of these videos have been recorded. Um, as always, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn or Twitter, comment down below, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I hope you come back for the next video.